Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. I'm uh, just reclining on my BSA sofa here. Uh, hopefully it won't be furniture for too much longer. This is the video where we get the engine into the frame and we're going to um, connect the CDI modules and see if we can get a spark out of it. Um, anyone that's been following this rebuild along will know that there aren't many parts in that engine. In fact, I don't think there are any parts in that engine that we haven't had a hand in. Um, we've worked on just about every single component. So it's definitely going to be uh, an exciting time when we hear it go for the first time and, and see you know, how well it runs. Um, I just want to say thanks very much indeed uh, to everyone that subscribed recently. Uh, the numbers are steadily going up. We're almost at 300 uh, subscribers now. So uh, yeah, thanks very much indeed. And as ever to my existing subscribers, uh, thanks for sticking with me. It's uh, always a pleasure to spend some time with you. Uh, if you're watching and you're enjoying what we're doing and you're not subscribed, then please consider uh, hitting the button and hitting the uh, bell icon, which will give you uh, instant access to everything we put on YouTube. Uh, also, my uh, limited understanding of how the system works, if you click the like button, uh, that puts us out to a wider audience and uh, that will really help us out as well. So uh, please consider uh, doing that. Um, right, I'm going to stop waffling and uh, let's have a go at uh, getting the engine in. Well, here we are with our D7 engine and uh, we're now ready uh, to go back into the frame. Um, I'm going to take the camera off the stand in a moment and take you on a bit of a uh, handheld adventure around the engine. We'll have a look at some of the and finishing touches that I've needed to do to, to get this thing ready. But um, the more obvious ones are our rebuilt carburetor now fitted. You can see the Kickstarter over here and the gear change levers fitted as well. You can't see that. Um, fit the spark plug and there's a couple of new cables appeared. Um, you recall the electrical cables from when we did the CDI. They're ready to, uh, ready to be connected. But also the throttle cable is now fitted. Um, I decided to do that now rather than um, after the engine went back in because I just wanted to close off the top of the carb really. Um, I made a little button to close off the um, redundant air control uh, hole. There's a threaded hole there. Um, one of my viewers was actually kind enough to write in and say that he recalls a little blanking button. So I thought well that sounds like a good idea. So got on the lathe, made one of those and um, we fitted the clutch cable as well um, because it's much easier to do on the bench. You can do it with the engine in the frame, but unless you've got a bike lift, it means sort of crawling around on the floor. So um, you'll see what I mean uh, in a moment. But I fitted that. So let's get the camera off the stand and we'll have a closer look at some of these details. OK, first off on our whistle stop tour then is the top of the carburetor. And there's that little button that I told you about made from a bit of um, scrap aluminium bar, turned it up in the lathe and um, that fits in there nicely. So that just helps to keep the, um, oop, here we go, we're off. That helps to keep the, um, the ratchet spring for the cap in place and also it plugs up that unsightly hole. And then we've got a new spark plug fitted. Uh, around here we have our Kickstarter, gear shift pedal, and uh, I'll show you why I fitted the uh, clutch cable, if we can just get in there. Uh, you might just be able to, there's the end of the clutch cable there. So it's behind that cover that covers the um, ignition stator. And it's a bit awkward to get to. And um, I think if you've got a bike ramp and you can raise the thing up. There you go, there's the clutch cable underneath the engine. And it just fits in that, that recess there. Yeah, as I'm saying, if you've got a, a bike ramp, I think it'd be fairly easy, but uh, I didn't want to scrabble around on the floor doing it, so um, I decided to fit it prior to fitting the engine. Um, and that is pretty much it. Um, next thing you'll see is me grappling with it to put it back in the frame. So let's go and, uh, let's go and have a go at that. Right, okay, so I've had the engine in. Uh, as a trial fit and uh, just to see it, if it all went in and what I found was that I had some clearance issues on this rear engine mount 
and it was actually it's slotted here I don't know if you can see that very well where I've got you on the camera but it's slotted at the top and at the bottom so the engine can basically um, move backwards and forwards in those slots and find its own position however it isn't slotted here at the front on the front engine mount and um, when I took this engine apart and rebuilt it I found that there were no dowels fitted uh, between the crankcase halves and there should have been so I've fitted dowels and um, I think what's, what that's done is it's given a more positive uh, location for the engine which is a good thing you don't want to be relying on uh, bolt tension to uh, positively locate something because it, it won't work it will eventually move um, but it's actually put this uh, rear near side uh, mounting out of clearance and it was touching one of the uh, casing screws which is you know far from ideal because if it's if it's fretting against the engine casing it will eventually crack it at a given time so we're just going to trim a little bit we're just going to um, just blend it slightly just to get that clearance so I'm going to use my um, air powered file a dyna file so stand by because it's going to be noisy you might want to turn the noise uh, turn the sound down on your uh, on your device but um, let's sort of go blend it a little bit off and then we'll retry it and see if we can get that clearance uh, let's have a look how can we get in there <laughs> Okay, forgive the handheld, if you will. I'll just move the light in a little bit. There you can see. I've thrown a little bit of black paint over it, um, just a dusting really to cover up the uh, fanging surfaces, uh, the exposed metal. So there's plenty of material left on the bracket. I've tidied the radius up to a, a reasonable, um, presentable sort of standard. And uh, we'll have another go at... Um, fitting the engine and see if we get that clearance. It's nice to have uh, a compressor in here now that's got the minerals to power my air tools. Although you saw or you heard rather how quickly uh, the compressor kicked in. That's a hundred litre compressor and uh, it kicked in quite quickly using the um, the air powered file. They're, uh, they're hungry little beasts, um, CFM hungry and uh, yeah, to get through some air, but it's um, it's nice. I'm I'm very uh, very happy to be able to use uh, things like that in here now that we've got um, a reasonable compressor. So, right, I'll put the engine back in. I will spare you the sweating and grunting. Um, don't think you come here for that. I hope you don't. And um, we'll get the engine in, and uh, I'll bring you back when we're getting some uh, some bolts into it. So, see you in a minute. Well, we're back and it's in. Um, 
we've got good clearance on that rear engine mount. Um, before I decided to uh, relieve that slightly with the Dynafile, um, I did jigger around with it a bit and uh, I loosened everything off and I moved everything as much as I possibly could. But um, yeah, I think that the front dowel has definitely dictated the position of the engine and um, you know that's just where it's going to go. So um, I don't think there was any way around it really. Um, the good news is uh, the two bolts that I've got loosely fitted at the moment slipped in very easily. I think the engine's aligned uh, very well. So um, without further ado, we'll get the rest of the bolts in, get the nuts tightened up, and uh, that will be our engine fitted. So let me get that done. I'll bring you back and we'll have a look at what the next step will be. Alrighty, um, engine is now securely, oops, excuse me, securely bolted into the bike, um, into the frame. So, uh, yeah, not going anywhere. Um, so that's one extra little bit done. Uh, I think now we'll take the tank off and. Um, we will have a look at where the CDI unit has to go um, so that we can figure out where the wiring has to go. Obviously, like I said, quite, quite a lot to still do on this bike, um, sort of chassis wise, cycle parts wise, quite a lot to do. Um, You'll notice the footrests. I've always wondered about those footrests. Um, they both appear to be bent upwards um, compared to pictures of other Bantams that I've seen. So I think they need a little bit of work. Um, so that needs doing, obviously. The brakes need doing, the swing arm bearings need doing. We need to look at the forks. Um, yeah, lots to do still, but uh, I really want to get this engine connected up and sparking um, at least so that we know that we're, we're on solid ground there and then um, figure out the rest of the bike, um, you know, cycle parts, wiring, all that kind of stuff. So um, I'll grab the CDI kit and we'll have a look at where it's going to go. Okay, well, we are up close and personal with the CDI, and uh, I've just got it loosely slung beneath the top tube. Um, I've just checked the uh, instructions, and uh, we need to be um, as close to this front gusset here, frame gusset, as we can without touching, and um, that's what we're going to aim for. Um, obviously, we need to get clearance. Um, we don't want it touching anywhere because then it will buzz and start to fret, and uh, that's not desirable so i'm just going to go and um, start nipping up the um nipping up the p-clips and then once we get them a little bit more snugged up we'll see where we are for clearance so let's do that now they're m6 so uh 10 millimeter um spanner and uh allen key is uh is a five. Okay, so we've we've wandered a little bit, haven't we? I should be used to these things because uh, aircraft are chock full of them and they, <laughs> they never do what you want them to do. That's better I think. Um, I'll start nipping up the real one. Oh, 
It's not looking too bad actually. Okay, I'm reasonably happy with that fit. I think what we'll do is, we could probably afford to come this way a little bit though, actually. Let's put the tank on. No, actually, I think we do need to go that way a little bit just to, just to take a little bit out of the HT lead. Yeah, we could probably do with another five millimeters uh, towards the headstock. So let's see if we can uh, if we can get that. We do want it to be right. What's that looking like? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with that, I think. Much better. It hasn't taken much out of this really, but at least it's um, it's nice and snug. So, let's just make sure the wires are out of the way and safe. We don't want to nip anything. And uh, we'll slip the tank on and just see how much of this we actually see. I don't think we're going to see any really. Um, obviously some of the wires will be dangling out, but we'll get those tidied up on final fit. So let me just grab the tank. And we will we'll just loosely put the tank in. Oops, kicking tools around. Should be using my little uh, tool caddy. Bad practice. All right. Let's just make sure that we don't trap anything. I'll just loosely put the nut on so that we don't knock anything out. go I'm sure all you're seeing now is a blue blur but I will move you Okay, tank is loosely fitted, making sure we're not crimping any cables off. No, we're not. 
So we've just put new throttle and clutch cables in. That would be a bad day out if we uh, damage those. Right, let me just move you, get you to a slightly better position, and uh, we'll see what we can see. Okay, so that is the tank loosely fitted. Let me just move you around a little bit. So as you can see, there's nothing below. I can just feel the bottom of the um, of the unit there. You can't see anything. That's fantastic. What a lovely piece of kit. Obviously, there's wires dangling out all over the place, but uh, we won't see those once once we've done our final fit and we've made our wiring loom. That's the uh, kill switch wiring loom there. But look at that. That's lovely. Very happy with that. So. Um, it's five o'clock now, so I'm going to go and uh, think about making some dinner. And um, obviously, you won't know any difference because it will be a split second before I'm back. And uh, we'll have a look at um, whipping the tank back off, getting the wires connected up and seeing uh, if we can get a spark. So exciting stuff. I'm very pleased so far. OK, well, I've managed to get the camera to focus on the spark plug. Uh, hopefully you can see that reasonably well and uh, hopefully, uh, assuming we get a spark, you'll be able to see that as well. Uh, I'm going to hold the back of the bike down because I think it'll rock around on the stand otherwise and uh, and blur the, vis uh, blur the image rather. But uh, let's, um, let's give it a couple of kicks and see what we get. Can't see we're getting a spark. Oh, we are. Quite difficult to see with the lights, I think. See what we'll do. We'll go all. Uh, we'll be like an astronomy show on TV. We'll do it with the lights off. Um. There's the Kickstarter. Right. Does the torch happen with? Oh, there you go. There you go. The shooting star in a distant galaxy. Okay, um, that's the arty bit done with. I'll turn the lights back on before I do myself a mischief. Okay, well, I think that's proved the system. And uh, we've got a nice spark there, which uh, hopefully is occurring at the right time if I've timed it right. Um, so we're about ready, I think, to um, put some petrol in and give it, a, give it a go and see if it starts. So I think that will be the next video. Uh, so I'll leave it there for now, but um, I'm very pleased that um, we've we've proved the system and uh, we've got a spark. So thanks very much indeed for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you on the next one.